Most beer recipes call for a 60 minute mash rest, but why? What happens if you mash for less or more time? To find out, we're chatting with the author of How to Brew, John Palmer, and looking at the results of three experiments, comparing 20 minute, two hour, and overnight mashes to the standard 60 minute mash rest. This episode is sponsored by Atlantic Brew Supply. More on them in a bit. The mash is an essential part of the brewing process. It's where milled grains are steeped in hot water, which activates enzymes that convert starch from the malt into fermentable sugar. Over the course of brewing history, it's become customary to mash for 60 minutes, as this allows enough time for complete conversion. It's the only right and proper thing to do. Or is it a bit more flexible than that? Well, in our short and shoddy series, we only match for 30 minutes, sometimes even less. Set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, counting down. That usually leads to reduced brew house efficiency, but in most cases, the beer still comes out just fine. And I'm a big fan of overnight mashing, holding to mash temperature while I sleep so I can awaken to converted work the next morning and get going with the boil. But how would those beers have compared to the very same beer that had been mashed for 60 minutes? We're going to look at three experiments that tested exactly that. We'll look at the differences in conversion and discover if participants could reliably distinguish the non-traditional mash length beers from their 60 minute siblings. And John Palmer is here to help explain these findings. But before we get to those experiments, we should first acknowledge that mashing hasn't always been something that takes an hour. Mashing is a continuation of the malting process. 300, 400, 500 years ago, you know, barley was harder to malt. It took longer to malt it than it does today. Uh, malting used to take about a week. Now it takes about three days. Likewise, today's barley varieties have been bred and selected to have higher levels of enzymes uh, to speed up the mashing process. The mashing process itself used to be uh, to take longer. By the 1800s, brewers were starting to measure mash temperature and gauging the amount of sugar realized from the mash. And that allowed brewers to find the temperature rest that we know today. The preeminent one being the 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius that allows us to get over the physical gelatinization or solubilization uh, temperature of barley starch that allows these, these starches to dissolve and open up in the water and, in, and allows the enzymes in the malt to now have access to them to convert them from starches to sugars. And when it comes to today's barley varieties that have been bred to have high levels of enzymes? Most of the starches will convert in say 15 minutes for example, say 90% after 15 minutes, 95% after half an hour, 97% or 98% you know, after an hour. So given that most conversion happens in those first 15 minutes, that presents us home brewers with an opportunity. Yeah, there is, there is an opportunity to save some time, you know, get the majority of your work out. You know, time is money. Um, so it may be worth it to, for you to do that. Now, our first experiment addresses that time-saving aspect. In an experiment conducted by Scott Mendez of the Brew Club, two blonde ales were brewed back to back. The first was mashed with a traditional 60 minute mash, boiled and then racked to a carboy. Then Scott used the exact same recipe again, but this time mashing for only 20 minutes. And there were some clear differences. The wort from the 20 minute mash was noticeably cloudier. And there was a difference in original gravity too, although not by much, with just two gravity points separating the batches. The beers were fermented and by day seven, gravity readings were taken showing the 60 minute mash reached a final gravity of 1.007 and the 20 minute mash was at 1.010. Another week later, the beers were served and the slight haze in the 20 minute mash was still apparent. That makes sense because one thing that German brewers still do today is the mash out. When you have malts that are less modified. You will have more residual starch. And when you have more retained starch, uh, it is harder to solubilize, harder to get it uh, converted. And that's the reason for the German practice of mash out. 
is to take that mash up to 70 degrees Celsius or like 160 degrees Fahrenheit and get that final bit of retained starch to convert. So retained starch could be the reason uh, for the in, in your short mash for more haze. But apart from that haze, were the 20 and the 60 minute beers distinguishable in other ways? To find out, the beers were served to 20 participants in different colored cups, so there's no peeking at beer clarity, where participants received two samples of the 60 minute mash and one sample of the 20 minute mash beer, and were then asked to identify the unique sample. At this sample size, 11 tasters would have had to identify the unique sample in order to reach statistical significance, but only nine made the accurate selection. So in this instance, the short mash led to a bit less conversion, although certainly not much, and a slightly hazier end product. Based on John's comments, I'd be quite interested to run this test again with a mash out step included. Now, before we get to the next experiment, a quick word about today's sponsor, Atlantic Brew Supply. I've been an Atlantic Brew Supply customer from as soon as I started brewing, and these guys are the real deal. Atlantic Brew Supply offer a huge supply of beer ingredients and equipment, and you can order online at AtlanticBrewSupply.com. And if you're ever in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, you owe it to yourself to stop by the store and check out their selection or participate in one of their many in-store events. Also, be sure to subscribe to their excellent Fermentality podcast hosted by Cat Pierce. Find out more at AtlanticBrewSupply.com. Now, in the next experiment, we wanted to look at the impact of mashing for longer than an hour. So, philosophy contributor Steve Thanos brewed two batches of American brown ale, one mashed for 60 minutes and the other for two hours, both at 152 Fahrenheit or 66 C. After the brew day was complete, Steve took gravity readings of both beers to find a slightly surprising result. The one hour mash had an OG of 1051 and the two hour mash had an OG of 1049. That's a bit odd, but it's only two gravity points and it was measured post boil. So we could be looking at instrument error here or perhaps slightly different boil vigor between the two batches. Either way, the extra hour didn't add much in the way of additional conversion to the work to say the least. After fermentation, the beers both had the same final gravity of 1012. And while it's tricky to look for differences in clarity with a beer this dark, the finished beers looked visually very similar. None of this surprised John. The beta amylase enzymes should be mostly denatured after about a half hour. Um, and so whether you're mashing for one hour or two hours, most of the beta should be gone after the first half hour. You may see a small difference in fermentability between a one hour and two hour, but I'm not sure how that would affect you know, your triangle test. Well, let's find out. Each participant was served two samples of the beer mash for one hour and one sample of the beer mash for two hours. To reach statistical significance, 11 tasters would have had to accurately identify the unique sample, which is exactly the number that did, indicating participants were able to reliably distinguish the beers. Now, when we get a significant result, we ask the participants who made the accurate selection to complete a brief preference survey. A total of five tasters reported preferring the beer mash for one hour, three said they liked the beer mash for two hours more, and three reported perceiving no difference. Steve himself performed five semi-blind triangle tests and correctly identified the odd beer out just two times. Steve said that to his palate, these beers tasted identical. So if there is a difference here, it doesn't seem to be a very pronounced one. And the potential benefits that a longer mash may bring, such as higher conversion or a more highly fermentable wort, did not come to fruition. Now, the last experiment is a favorite of mine, the overnight mash. Former philosophy contributor Brian Hall brewed two Pilsners, one mash for 60 minutes and the other overnight, well, overnight and then some, for a total mash length of 15 hours. Now, now my method of overnight mashing is to leave my temperature controller set to mash temperature, where it pulses on and off to retain a consistent level of heat. But Brian was using a propane system, so he mashed in at 152 Fahrenheit, then wrapped his mash tun with insulation to preserve as much heat as possible. 15 hours later, the overnight mash batch had dropped 82 Fahrenheit or 46 Celsius from its original mash temperature. 
Brian then proceeded to mash a second batch for 60 minutes, completed the ball for both and took gravity readings to find the overnight mash had an OG of 1054 and the 60 minute mash was at 1049. So better conversion for the overnight mash and it turned out to have better attenuation too, finishing at 1.008 FG, whereas the 60 minute mash was at 1.011. That does show that some beta amylase survived the one hour mash at temperature um and uh and then you know as the beer cooled it survived and was able to break down more of the uh the large sugars the otherwise unfermentable sugars that would have survived into the beer the overall you know total extract wouldn't be affected just the degree of fermentability now the fact that you did have you know a, an increase in overall total extract is is also significant. Maybe that reflects uh, you know residual starches that did not make it into the first beer uh, that were able to solubilize and and convert in the longer mash. After cold crashing and fining with gelatin, both beers were crystal clear. In the triangle test, participants were served two samples of the overnight mash beer and one sample of the beer mash for 60 minutes. 12 tasters would have had to select the unique sample in order to reach statistical significance, though only eight made the correct selection. And Brian himself was only able to select the odd beer out two times out of seven attempts, which is right in line with random chance. So, if nothing else, I think we can take from these experiments that there truly are viable alternatives to the standard 60 minute mash rest. And I asked John if he sometimes strays from convention on his own brew days. I don't see a reason to go shorter. Um, but then again, I'm, I'm not brewing as often as many people do. Um, and uh, yeah, my kids are grown, so yeah, there's no no distractions from young children to hurry things along. Well, how about you? Let me know in the comments what a standard mash rest is for you. I used a 30 minute mash rest when I brewed a Czech premium pale lager in short and shoddy style. And you can see how that turned out in this video here.